Good afternoon, everyone. Um, we are having a few um, last minute tech issues, um, but we'll kick off um, now. Um, so welcome back to the third and final webinar for the Excel for EID webinar series. I'm Charlotte. I'm a Senior Biosecurity Officer for the Sheep and Goat EID project at the Local Land Services. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and I'll distribute the recording to all those registered as soon as it's available. Um, feel free to ask questions during the, the webinar. The microphones are disabled, um, so pop all questions into the chat. We acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and waters and we pay respect to elders past and present. We're committed to providing places in which Aboriginal people are included socially, culturally and economically through collaborative approaches to our work. Um, a little bit about Sally. Sally Martin's career in the sheep and wool industry spans more than 30 years. After leaving the New South Wales Department of Primary Industries more than a decade ago, she started a sheep genetic and consulting business, which we now know as Sheep Metrics. Welcome, Sally. Thanks, Charlotte, very much. I'll just share my screen um, and we'll get into um, this session. So if anyone joined us a little bit later, we're just going to do a very quick recap on. So this is the third webinar in the series that we've been running through over the last uh, six weeks. So we covered off some of the uh, back to basics type um, sorting your data in Excel, understanding some of the functionality and some of the terms that you would also hear. We talked a bit about bucket files and setting up your traits for the indicator about uploading and downloading um, information into uh, your spreadsheets as well as um, onto your devices. And so then we went to webinar two, which we started to get a little bit more detail about capturing information and answering some of the questions that you might be having, collating your data into multiple data points, and also how to format your information and storage uh, was something that was also we covered off on. So if you missed any of those, you can go back to the links um, on the uh, website that um, Charlotte will send out so that you can have a look at those later on. So what we're going to get into today is actually building on your data over time. So one of the key things with making decisions is how we utilise multiple traits and being able to do that. We'll also have a little bit of a chat about um, RAM and use selection and, and then also into some of the software packages if that is an option for you. We won't go into a huge amount of detail but I'll cover off on um, a few of the options that are available to you. And we'll also have a look at maybe some places that you can actually utilise your data elsewhere. So to start off with, I'd like to, to spend a couple of minutes just talking a bit about where we start capturing multiple data um, or multiple traits and having a clear breeding and production objective is something that I think is really important. What this allows you to do is to prioritise as well the key traits that, you, that is important to your business and to your um, production system. And if you have traits that aren't as important, but they're still part of that breeding objective. They may be ones if you don't have time that you may not be collecting that data on, but you're really focusing on the ones that are going to be making you money or the ones that are really important and things that you need to be changing. So I've got an example on the screen here to, um, where we've got a number of traits and whether we want to increase, maintain or decrease those. And, and then we also start to look at what the priorities are. So the priorities are around um, whether we want to ha have them move a lot quicker than the others. For example, if we want to maintain something, you might also be needing to measure it. Um, and growth rates might be a classic example. If we want to be able to follow that through and know that the ewes that we're keeping to, um, in, in the system uh, are growing really well, then um, and then the next thing is complementing that with your RAM purchases and being able to make sure that they're aligned. What, what, so the next part of it is if we have multiple traits, how are some good ways to be able to go about um, pulling that information together? 
And so for merino breeders and dooney breeders, we can use Rampower, which is a within group index, and it uses, utilizes the genetic parameters that are currently used with um, sheep genetics. So how you would purchase your rams with ASBVs, Australian sheep breeding values. You can also have a look at doing dollar per head. You might do a wool value or carcass value, depending on, again, your production system. Kilos of lamb per ewe and ewe efficiency, you'd need to have full pedigree, but you can also be looking at potentially growth rates. And as we talked about in the previous webinars, capturing that information in terms of whether they are pregnant and those pregnancy scans over time. So I thought we'd just have a quick look at what the um, what RAM power indexes look like. So RAM power is a web-based um, program that where you're able to upload information to it. So the, the traits that are being collected on the sheep and you receive back, and I'll show you an example in a minute of an index you, um, that you can then use to rank. To be able to, there's a number of service providers um, that you can contact to be able to access RAM power, um, or you can talk to Sheep Genetics directly if you want to do it yourself. Um, this is something that we, we offer our clients and more than happy to work through um, the examples. So I've got an example here on the screen that we'll have a look at actually in the spreadsheet in a moment, where we've got um, identification and then some of the key traits. Um, and what we might do is click over to that spreadsheet now. So what we would have captured, um, Charlotte, can you see my spreadsheet? Maybe if you could um, zoom in a couple of. Yep. How's that? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so this is a spreadsheet that we have um, collated the information together, uh, which we talked a bit about last time in we used uh, the formula V lookup. Um, so that was in webinar two, if you want to go back and have a look at that. What we'll, I will show you it again in a moment. But um, so what we've got here is our identification, which mob, so this is our electronic identification which mob these ewes were in. I've actually got the um, index I've already brought into this um, particular spreadsheet. And then I've got all of the raw data that, that has been, that we've collected, um, that actually is feeding into this one number. So what the index does is it balances, and in this particular case, um, it's the Merino production index, so what it's doing is it's balancing, we want to increase fleece weight, reduce micron, and a slight improvement in body weight or growth. And I will just show you what a quick example. So this would be the example of what you would see that would come out of the, um, out of ramp power. So again, you've got your identification, we've got a number of different indexes, so you can have up to three if you're not sure which one, so you can actually start having a look at um, which index might best fit your production system. Um, so I've basically pulled in this index here um, into the spreadsheet um, that we're going to have a look at. So, when we've got this information in, we started to look at filters. Um, and so I've, so if I go back again, apologies. So if we go into, um, into data and we turn on the filter, uh, what we can then start to do is we've done our V lookup and we've pulled our index into the, our working spreadsheet. You can actually start to sort and we started to do that before. And if we wanted to put a ranking in, if you put um, the apostrophe and a one, we can actually drag that down and that will give us our ranking. So if we drag that down and I can go right down to the bottom, sorry if everyone's getting a bit dizzy. Um, so we've got 785 animals in this um, particular spreadsheet. 
Now this is, you'll notice that there's a little green um, triangle at the corner of the, of the cells and that's indicating that this is now a text. And so if we want to sort, um, so just close your eyes everyone, I'll go to the top of the screen. If we were wanting to do some sorting here and then we want to resort on, on the, um, so I've just sorted on body weight and we want to now resort on the ranking. Because it's in a text, what it's actually doing, it's picking up the ones and it's ranking all of those. So it's actually not in numerical order. So what we need to do is to take it, um, take the text and convert that to a number. So the way we're going to do that is to, if we go control shift and arrow down, I've now copied that whole, you can see we're down at the bottom of that spreadsheet, that whole column with those, that, um, those rankings. And I'm going to, you'll see this little, um, little sign here. I'm going to go, so we've got, they're sorted in as a text. I want to convert them to a number. So I'm going to convert that to a number. Close your eyes again. We're going to go to the top of the screen. And now if I sort, I've now got them in order, in um, ranking order. So another really good, so I know you were getting a bit dizzy with um, me doing all of that moving around on the spreadsheet. Another really good thing that I like to use is viewing. So if you go onto view and you go over to freeze panes, so I can either freeze the top row. So then when I scroll down, the top row stays the same. Or if I want to unfreeze that, I can actually go and I can freeze um, the, now the panes. And what it's doing is it's keeping where my cursor was, it's keeping the top row and it's keeping these rows. So if I then scroll down, that moves. But if I go across, that keeps everything together. Um, so there are two, two ways that you can actually start having a look at your spreadsheet um, and making that a little bit more easier to, to get around. The key thing is to remember that you might be in that mode. And don't forget if you've got filters and you don't and you've got a blank. Um, so we'll do that again. Let's go insert and we take off our filters, our data and our filter and say I just quickly put it on and I'm not thinking very clearly and I've moved things along. So you can notice now that we've only filtered these um, these columns and not the rest across here. So if I start sorting on here, all of a sudden I've corrupted my data. So again, undo is a very good button. <laughs> um, you just need to make sure that you, you have, every, um, when you're using filters, that everything you want filtered is, is um, included in, um, in the spreadsheet. Okay, so now we've got our ranking. What we might want to do with this particular case is let's just say we want to take out, um, let's say that uh, we want to identify, I've got a grade column here, identify the top, uh, let's say the top 20% based on the index. So if I go into, click on the top here with my um, left side of your mouse, and if I go down here into number filters, we can actually start to, so you can go if anything's greater than a certain number or less than, but this is also a quick way to do what our top, and we want to go um, 20, and we don't want the 20 items, but we want percent. So, and we hit okay. So now what we've actually got is all the animals that are ranked in the top 20%, based on that index. So let's just say we want to call these our tops. And if I arrow that down, uh, sorry, double click on that little square, that'll take that down to the bottom of that page, um, of those ones that have been sorted. Um, let's also go and now find, um, let's do the bottom 20%. Again, 
So we've only got top and bottom, um, but you could actually then start to work out, um, you know, you could change your percentages. But for this instance, let's just work on 20%. Okay, so now it's given me the bottom 20%. And these might be the ones that we might decide we want to cull. How you can check that this has been working, so you can actually then clear, clear the filter from that spreadsheet um, and we can, you know, we can sort again. But let's talk about, have a quick look at, did that actually pick out the um, animals that are in the top 20%? So if we go back and this is what we did last time, we looked at our pivot table. So click on, so we want a pivot table and we want to make sure that it's covered. Um, so it's gone down to the bottom of our spreadsheet and it's across and it's captured everything. Can we go okay? And we change that to, this is our summary sheet now. I'll just make that a little bit bigger. So if I click in my pivot table, I can actually drag my grade down and I can have a look at, um, let's count how many animals. Um, so we've got 156 and a, um, in both the top and the bottom. So that should work out to be 20%. But we can also start having a look at, well, what's, um, well, I'm just dragging the information down that I want to have a quick look at, greasy fleece weight, and I'll just do clean fleece weight and micron. Um, so it's counted those, but now it's given me a sum. So if I right click, I can go in and do the average. I'll right click again, average. And it's a little bit messy with all of that. So if I, in my home page, I can just reduce the number of points that we're having a look at. So what, what we're now having a look at here is that the average for our indexes is 100. Um, and with your RAM power index, they will be 100 because everything above, um, so it's because it's, we're only talking about within a group or within a mob. So anything that's above 100 is above average and anything below is below average. So based on our index, we've got the low ranking animals that were based on the index. So they're actually lighter um, compared to the top 20%. They're cutting less wool compared to the top 20%. They're, um, and they're broader. Um, so we've picked out animals that are broader, cutting less and are slightly um, lower gro uh, growth rates. Um, so automatically, I feel really comfortable with that. I think that index is actually doing the job that I've asked it to do, which it's collating all of that information for me into one number that I can then start utilising to be able to make some decisions with. So if we go back to our um, spreadsheet here, uh, and so we've got our, our tops and our bottoms worked out, but you might also be interested, one of the other points that we talked a bit about uh, before was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, to be able to do, say, a fleece value. So what we've got here is I've actually pulled in some um, prices and just close your eyes, go to the top of the screen. Um, I've pulled in some prices that um, were based on um, a sale recent, um, uh, recently that, that you can, ha um, and this price relates to the micron. So I'll just highlight the, the micron and, and we're working with this price. So at 17 micron at the time when we, this, these wool prices um, were available. That they they were averaging um, uh, seven uh, seventeen dollars seventeen hundred cents. So to be able to work out our fleece values, um, and this is where it's actually important if you're wanting to do this, is to actually work on a clean fleece weight um, as well, rather than a greasy fleece weight, because we sell our wool. Um, clean. So to be able to work out your um, 
the, the formula that you will use is we go equals and we're going to take our fleece weight and we're going to times it by our price because the price has been allocated for this fleece based on its average micron. And because it's in cents, so we could go, so it, that looks a bit too expensive. <laughs> I mean, it'd actually be really good if every fleece was worth that, wouldn't it? So we actually need to bring it back to um, the dollars. So um, we divide that by 100. So in this particular um, situation, this at the time when this was done, uh, at 17 micron, a sheep cutting 4.9 should give um, an, a, a, around $83. So you can copy your um, your uh, formula down. So and we can make sure that that's that's going down. Yep, that, that looks all good. And then we can actually add that in to our pivot table really quickly to see what the differences are. So with our pivot table, we'd already picked up that um, spreadsheet. So it's if I just clicked on that, that's put it over here in this um, in this side. But I actually want it in my table, and I want to know the differences. And it hasn't come up. So when I originally set that pivot table up, that column was blank. So if I just right click and go and refresh, it's actually put that um, some figures in there now, but it's counting them. So it's actually counting the fleece weights. So if I go down here and I go average, then I can actually start to have a really quick look at what the fleece values of those animals that we've identified that were in the top are cutting us $92 and the ones that are in the bottom are cutting us $70 on average. Now we don't sell fleece um, wool by the fleece, we sell it by the bale, but what it starts to do is to starts to give us an indication that yes, are we culling the right sheep? So I get another way that you can also start to have a look at this type of information over time is um, being able to actually look at growth rates. So if we have a look at some, some body weights that have been captured in the past. Um, oh, sorry, Charlotte, you had a question? Sorry. I've just got a, a question from Kate in the chat. Um, she's just asking if you can go over the calculation from the GF um, weight to clean fleece weight, please. Ah, oh, certainly. Let's jump back to that. So that's a really good question. Um, so what will I do here? If I, I'll just add in a new column. And so we've got our greasy fleece weight that's been captured. And uh, at the time, um, so whether you've taken a mid-side sample pr prior to shearing um, or around at shearing time, in this particular case, we've got a yield. So this particular fleece is 70% yield. And to be able to calculate the clean fleece weight, you'd go equals, um, so we, we're taking our um, fleece, fleece weight and we're timesing it by our yield. And Sorry, and we divide because that now we've got to make that, uh, and we divide by hundred. So the formula to calculate your clean fleece weight is um, we need to times the basically reduce that seven kilos by seventy point four percent, or sorry, by thirty percent. So um, yeah, I hope that explains how we've done that. So you then just copy that down. And remember sometimes that actually uh, we want to be able to, if we go control C and remember we talked about pasting the values. So now we've got the value without the formula, which sometimes is, is a good idea so that you don't, if you do move things around on your spreadsheet, you know, I've just added another column in, it could upset another formula that we've got um, sitting in, in a different 
spot. So um, I find once you've done it and you're happy with the information that you've got, actually, so that's right click on. Um, so I've just, you highlight your column and you can go copy. Uh, so control C and then I've right clicked on my mouse and I go paste values. Um, again, the undo button works really well. Okay, so let's just have a very quick look at now. Um, so if we were in a, if we had some body weights that we'd collected and we want to work out what our growth rates were. <clears throat> and you can calculate the number of days in between and um, to be able to work out, you know, um, you know, if it's 30 days, will you divide it by 30? Uh, I do find, um, so if, let's just go, I like using the dates um, because then if I want to change anything, I can. Um, so the way to work it out is we um, going to work out the growth rates between the weight captured in in May and what our final weight is. You could you could actually be looking at the growth rates in between the weights, but we'd, for today we're just going to have a look at the the absolute growth rate over that period of time. So we go equals and we open open the brackets and we want to know the difference between this current weight that we've captured today, um, less the weight that was captured back in May. And I also want to know, I want to um, divide that then by the um, and open brackets, the dates. So I can actually, um, so today's date, less however many days it was between the, um, uh, the 18th of May and close that. Now, last time we did talk about putting, um, so what's really important is that we want this date, if we drag this, actually, let's just do it. So at the, so to be able to have a look at the, um, so this particular animal was growing at 231 grams per head per day. If I drag that down, I'm going to get a, an error. And the reason I'm getting an error, if we go and click on well, what it's done, so it's actually dragged, yes, the weights are fine in terms of the formula, but it's actually dragged the, the dates down, um, the, the cells down for the dates. So what we need to do, um, which we did talk about last time, is actually put dollar signs in front of the... Um, the cells that we want to remain um, steadfast, basically. Um, so we want them to stay stay put, and the rest of the the, the values um, with the formula can flow down um, the spreadsheet as we as we drag it down. So if we click on the formula, um, it what it does by clicking on the formula up here in this section, it actually highlights the cells in the different colors. So this blue one is this one, and the red one is this, and so forth. So we can see that where the formula is looking right, and we're actually getting the information that we want. So again, we can copy that formula down now. You might want to, as we did before, um, highlight that so that I've just clicked my left side of the mouse and I can copy that and I can then paste that um, as a value if I want to. So a thing might be that we want to um, identify animals will predict how quickly um, how they might how they might grow. So if we wanted to set up a formula to, to give us an indication if these animals are going to continue growing at the growth rates that they have been over this period of time, what's the predicted weight that we might hit by the time we are at, uh, at the end of September, for example? So the way that we'd work that out is that, um, so if we go equals, um, and we want to take this growth rate and we want to, um, so we're going to actually times it, so that little asterisk, and we want to times it by the, the um, however many days it is between 
today and the end of September. So if we go the 30th of September minus today's date, that'll give us our dates. So they'll put on a predicted extra 16 kilos. Um, and if you want to check your dates, I sometimes do this just some um, just to make sure. So if I go that minus that, that should give me 70 days. Um, so you can just double check that your formulas are working whilst you're growing with your confidence. So the next, so if that's going to, that animal's, if it continues to grow at that growth rate, puts on an extra 16 kilos, but I also want to add in, well, it's already at 47.5. So what's out, what's the weight that it'll be at? So it's telling me that it'll be at, um, should reach 60, um, three kilos, 63.7 kilos by the time the end of September, given its current growth trajectory. Again, we want to make sure that um, we can put our dollar signs in front of our dates because we want to keep that um, constant and we can copy that down. So our next kind of question might be, well, how many are going to be above our target weight? So what we can actually do is put our filter on again. So I highlight the row that I want to filter and I'm going to go and filter. And let's, so, oh, we've got one losing weight. That doesn't look very good. But anyway, we'll sort out what's going on there. So the range between the animals that we've currently got is 37.9 and one that's 106. Okay, that looks interesting. Let's find out what's going on here. So let's just sort out, okay, this is a really good way, and I didn't preempt to heal this, but this is a really good way we, with being able to use your data, what's actually going on here. It looks like this animal has a, something's happened to it, um, or we've completely missed that weight. So you could actually, although we took that formula out, didn't we? Um, so you could actually, if, if the animal's still there and there's just something happened and a weight got missed, for example, you could actually um, look at what that animal's um, growth rate was um, between, a, you know, a different um, time period as well as, um, to, sorry, I should have left the formula in there, but um, it's good for everybody. So we're just going to look at um, these dates. And I need to put my brackets in. Um, so you can get a bit of an indication um, of how you can actually look at, um, yeah, Move, move it around so you get a bit of an indication if that animal's still there, um, how, what it might be looking um, looking like. So we did have some animals that were very had very high weights, didn't we? They started at high weights. Okay, so what you might actually start to think about looking at this data is actually I've got some that can go now, well and truly. Um, this is way too heavy. I don't need to ha have them hanging around. So again, we could actually start to have a look at our filters and we could um, any anything above a certain number or greater than, for example, um, uh, let's just say anything that's above 60 kilos now, for example. And so what it's done is it's been able to highlight all the animals that are above 60 kilos, which is quite a few. And you might go, right, well, that's my target. Um, and you can actually start identifying how many animals, yes, may, may be above, above those particular targets. Um, Charlotte, any questions on that coming through? Nothing as of yet. Okay. I'll um, let you know. <laughs> yeah. No, that's all good. Uh, so I'm just trying to think of a different um, a different scenario, but um, where this could actually be. So we talked about predicting weights, being able to go well. Is um, are they going to meet our target weights? And 
the other thing might be if you're looking at joining ewe lambs, are they going to meet their joining weights? Are they, you know, between what 70, again, ewe lambs could be 60 to 75% of a standard reference weight, depending on your production system. So are they, uh, and or do I need to split, start splitting them up and to be able to feed, um, feed them differently? So what this starts to do is start to give you some options in terms of um, where you might um, start looking at changing feeding or drafting them into different groups and mobs. And this could be quite useful, definitely in a feedlotting situation, um, but also are your sheep going to hit certain targets to be able to um, meet um, your, your production and joining decisions and things like that. So we did also talk a bit about um, where you you might sit with um, being a uh, looking at utilising and building up your data over time, and we talked a bit about before about uh, last webinar about pregnancy scanning and being able to look at that year on year. Where I find it useful, and we used we did look at this formula before, is I like to see people naming their um, the year that they were preg scanned, uh, and and then and having those as separate traits. So in some of um, in some of the hardware indicators, you might find that if you just use preg or preg scan. What will happen is if you do say you did it this year and then you did it again next year, next year's potentially will override this year's um, data. So if you want to be able to pull it up year on year, you need to be able to at least have it in your indicator um, as a different or a separate trait. And I've just got an example here you know, 21 preg um, through to this year's um, pregnancy scanning. And we talked about this formula, Constantinate, um, to be able to bring that information into one number. Uh, and that was, so for example, that's bringing, um, you know, we've got 1120, so I can look at that really quickly and know that she's been pregnant three times, but this year she was dry. She did have twins last year, and um, you know, have I been, have I given her all the opportunities to get get back into condition, uh, into enough condition to be able to get back in lamb? So we also, all, and the wet and drying, you can also look at doing that um, and, and naming that separately too for each um, subsequent years. But if you're culling. Um, any ewes that lamb and lose, uh, uh, lamb and lost are dry at lamb marking time, then it may not be um, needed to be um, yeah, captured year on year. So we also talking um, just briefly about some software packages. We've talked a bit about um, using Excel and having multiple sheets and making sure that you're saving them in a data file that you have, um, you know, for that year drop, for example, but also to be able to make sure that you're not working on your originals, but you're actually working on, um, in this is in Excel, working on any, a, a copy of your original data file and potentially having a master file that you might bring together um, using your VLOOKUP or your XLOOKUP into having um, all your data collated for a particular year drop. When you start getting a lot more information, um, a software package may be suitable for you as well. I'd be thinking about how often you will use it and there are a number of service providers. This is also something that we do is we actually help people um, store this information and we can pull um, the data together and have it in, in potentially one of these software packages that you then can then potentially use in the yards to be able to pull all this information up. Uh, and again, it really depends on how 
uh, you know, the complexity of your system, but also how you want to view the data. So it is, software packages are a really good way of capturing multiple traits on lots of different animals. And they're generally database systems. There are some functionalities of some of the software that can actually provide you with, um, you know, graphs and some other information uh, at, um, in a reasonably timely manner. Again, be consistent with your naming and, and how, you know, whether you've got certain traits that you might have set up in there. They may actually be already set um, in the software, so you just be, be aware of that. And then, you know, what you want to use the data for and when you want to use it. So we've got a few examples up here on the screen. So this is Stockbook, um, which is out across systems. Um, this is Cool Collect. Um, which is Sapien technology, you've got your Breed Elite system, and this is some basic, um, uh, uh, so this is the data Mars, the true test, where you've got um, your sessions that, um, and you can have a look at a few distribution graphs and things like that, and then the Gallagher system, the, the animal livestock um, system that they have. So just quickly, the like stop. So I've just got two examples here, and this is not. Um, th this is just an example of how you might see some of the data. If you've got pedigree, um, you can see your pedigree tree. You've got your um, your joining history and your pregnancy scanning um, information. Again, this can be viewed in different formats, um, and then potentially. Um, you might want to have this information coming up in the yards on a computer screen, um, being coming out of a, a laptop. So in this particular case, you can actually determine, uh, so this is Stockbook, as I said, uh, you can actually determine which traits you see on the screen. And you can also um, identify uh, and move these around. So you can tailor it to, to how you want to see it. Uh, the Cool Collect system, uh, again, they have a number of different ways to actually display the information. Um, they, they've actually generated uh, how um, you know, a, a dollar number, they I think have a direct link into getting some fleece prices as well. And again, this could be some pregnancy information that you have uh, that, that you want to have a look at, you know, what's been happening year on year. We will have some recordings that you can have access to that um, uh, or Charlotte will put up um, with the information that gets sent out if you want to find out some more information and we can direct you to some of their websites. The majority of the software packages that you'll find will um, be on a fee basis and generally um, yeah it's usually a subscription some of them some of these ones that are supporting some of the your immediate indicators um, potential uh, will be free um, to a certain level and then um, I think they have a paid version so in terms of um, oh sorry Charlotte yep I was just um um, we've got a comment in the chat from Kate who's just mentioned that Sheep Genetics have a free database program called Pedigree Master, um, but she said you need to be a member of Sheep Gen Genetics to use it. Yes, yeah, so Sheep Genetics, do, uh, yes, Pedigree Master is available and it's predominantly for submitting data into Sheep Genetics. Um, it does have, uh, it's, um, a, a fairly, uh, it's a good little program, but if you're wanting to have information recalled in the yards, um, yeah, I think you can can use it to some extent, but uh, the, probably some of the other software packages that are available um, also um, probably have a little bit more functionality. But again, it really depends on what it is that you want to get out of it. Um, so the, the other thing I just wanted to think about is where you may also might, where you might use some of this data um, elsewhere, uh, and you know it might be budgeting or if you're doing part of an integrity scheme, you might be looking at your auditing. 
but also maybe when you're thinking about if you've got surplus sheep sales, um, actually splitting your ewes up into whether they've been scanned as twins or you might have data that you, um, as shown in that previous spreadsheet, that you might want to actually, you, you can actually sell them with some of that information as well. And there could be some areas in terms of, you know, where we're heading with all the carbon accounting in terms of growth rates in particular that um, I think will potentially start to um, see some opportunities as well. Um, so I, I've probably gone through this uh, uh, quite quickly, but I was just thinking if there was any other questions that people would like to um, have a look at with utilising Excel. Um, the other one that we probably didn't cover off on much last time was actually using graphs. So I might just show how to do a couple of graphs that might be of interest. Um, and I'll just come back to the, um, the wool data that we've got. So if we wanting to say, for example, graph um, the fleece weight and the micron, um, if you highlight, so I'm just going to, uh, I've just um, put my mouse over those two cells and if I go um, control shift and arrow down, I've picked up all of our um, micron and fleece weights. So you can go up into insert and you've got a number of graphs that you can actually um, generate quite quickly. And if we just look at um, just a scatter graph, let's put it somewhere. Oh, here it is, I can see it. Um, you can actually start to um, graph, yeah, some of your information. You could go and put this out on a, on a different, um, on a different sheet if you wanted to. Um, so it quickly shows you and you can, so where you just need to, so if I double click on this, hang on, I'm just gonna get rid of our, um, no, it won't let me do that. Hang on, view, I'll just get rid of our, unfreeze my um, screens, it'll make it a bit easier. So if I, yeah, double click on here, I can actually start to have a look at, like that just looks like a bit of a blob at the moment. So if we go over to um, click on and let's just go, the lowest one looks like to be about 15 micron. So these are our microns down the side here and this is our fleece weights across the bottom. Um, so what you've got is, this is your X and your Y um, axis of your, of your graph. And we can go three. So that starts to give us a bit of an indication now um, of some of our, we've got animals that, um, if we go our 18 microns um, and you know, you've got some that are actually cutting quite a lot of wool that are finer. And then you've got ones that are broader that aren't cutting a lot of wool. So just quickly, we can have a look at, um, yeah, just what what, our, what the data might be um, looking like. We can then actually also start to do, if you want to do um, like a distribution. So let's do that. Um, let's have a look at the distribution for fleece weight. So if we, the, the, t the lowest was 3.1 and the top was 6.5. Okay, so what we're going to do, and you can potentially set this up um, separately. So our clean fleece weight, um, <clears throat> So if we go three, three point five, four, four, five, 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 six. So if we, sorry, I'm just going to get rid of some of these to bring it all into one.
So if we go up into, and this is something that you might need to, if I can find it. Oh, I haven't installed this on this new computer. <laughs> okay, I'll have to put this in one of the recordings. <laughs> I've got a new computer and I haven't installed. There's an add-on that you install, um, but I'll pop that in the recording. Sorry about that. Um, the other thing I will just mention is that um, if you, I liked, instead of using absolute values, I think utilising a um, percentage. So in this particular case, we've got greasy fleece weight percentage. And um, I think we talked about how you calculate that before, but let's just quickly do it now while we're at, while we're on to it. Um, so you can do this for fleece weight. Um, it's a really quick number to have a look at that you don't have to, it's quick for your brain because your brain goes, well, 100 is average. You don't have to think, well, what's the average? Is it above or below that? Um, 100 is really easy to remember. So we can see that this particular animal um, was 104, so is 4% 4, uh, 4 above the average, whereas this one here is 98, so um, he's, well, you know, 1.5% below the average. Um, so to be able to work that out, your percentage, so it's equals, um, and we want to take this um, and we want to... Um, divide that by the average. So what I usually do is you can work out the average or you can highlight the whole lot. Actually, it's another formula, average. And then I'm going to close that bracket again. And we're going to times that by 100. It's probably a much quicker way to do this, but I I like this way because then I know that I'm actually getting. Now if I press F4, that'll automatically so F4 put the um, dollar signs in my formula for me really quickly. So what I've done is I've taken seven kilos and I've divided that by the average of all of the fleece weights that we have. And I've times that by 100 so that I've got um, that, well, it's the same figure. That's good. <laughs> if, for example, I didn't put the 100 there, um, you could actually go up into home and you could actually put the percentage there. So it's slightly different. Don't know why. Hmm, it's interesting. Anyway. Um, we'll delete that. <laughs> it didn't look right. Um, so oh, I know probably why it's, um, it's a different animal. That's why. Don't worry about me. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, but it, it, it's, it is something that I find with Excel. You go, oh, no, that doesn't look right. Always go back and check it, check your formula and um, just know that, yeah, I guess things can go wrong. Anyway, I guess that's kind of where I uh, wanted to get to, Charlotte. Is there any other questions? I do have a question from Pamela in the chat, but I'm not sure if you'll have time for it today. Um, she just asked if you could go over using RAM power to do in indexes again. Um, Sure. I'll just quickly go back to this um, slide. So RAM Power is, it's a web base, and I'll actually just make that a little bit bigger. Basically, I can actually. So RAM Power is, um, it's a web-based um, system that is with sheep genetics. And the, the results that you get back, which, um, so this, if I just reduce this a little bit, um, so it uses the same genetic parameters that uh, is utilised to generate the breeding values that you see from sheep genetics, our ASBVs, Australian Sheep Breeding Values. 
but what it's doing is it's only looking at the animals within your mob or within that group of animals that you submit um, that or that we submit into um, into the website, which um, crunches the numbers and then we get the index back. So if you, what we might do is actually, there's probably the, to be able to explain what indexes are, we probably do need a little bit more time, but we can provide some links, I think, um, into um, sheep genetics that, that will um, yeah, help, to, help to explain um, explain that in more detail. Did you ha have any other questions, Charlotte? Nothing in the chat yet, um, but if everyone, um, if anyone has any questions, pop them in the chat now and um, yeah, we'll, we'll get to them before the session's over. Um, and apologies again for everyone for the tech issues that we had at the start. Um, I know there's a few that couldn't log on or um, um, missed a fair bit, but um, we, the, the most important thing is we are recording this, so I will be sending the recording out. Um, and yeah, with all the notes as well. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Okay, I'll just give everyone another couple of mi minutes to um, to ask more questions. Um, yeah, thanks so much, Sally, for for that as well. That was um, another good session. Oh, thank you. I guess, I guess the main thing with it is people just to use it and just be really clear with what it is that you're trying to get out of it. There's definitely, um, and if you think, oh well, I'd like to, you know have certain information provided or th there are, you know, like um, the business that we have, um, there are other service providers out there as well um, that, that might be able to help. Um, Sheep Genetics do have um, um, uh, other service providers linked on, on their website and depending again from a commercial point of view, there might be just some basic stuff that you are wanting to do to be able to you know, upload a draft list and things like that, uh, that we will also have those recordings of um, smaller videos uh, with some of that specific information available as well. Sure. Um, got another couple of questions. Um, and Pamela, this isn't a dummy question at all, but I was just asking um, if RAM power is something you pay for. So Rampower is, um, depending if you do it yourself or whether you get a service provider to do it for you, um, yeah, so generally speaking, it probably, like once the information's collected, um, probably takes us uh, half an hour or 45 minutes to do. Um, and so that would be just our time. But yeah, through Sheep Genetics, they do offer um, access to that. But I think I'm not sure if you have to go through a little bit of training to be able to do that but just understanding and being able to interpret the results is probably a key thing to think about um, and how you then you're going to use it and which indexes are going to be specific to you and your production system so there's a there's a number that you can pick from that you can um, uh, get have access to um, yeah um, and Rowan's just asking, what other industry indexes are popular? So industry indexes, the, probably the main ones that I'd focus on are what's available on sheep genetics and trying to align with some of those um, if purely because they're going to also balance out with the, the rams that you're purchasing as well. And don't forget uh, indexes, um, you know, it's a great ranking tool in a commercial operation in terms Unfortunately, at the moment with RAM power, it's only really available for uh, your, your wool breeds, so really your dunies and your um, and your merinos. There's not, not nothing available um, specifically for um, um, uh, yeah uh, composite breeds or, or cross breeds. So really focusing on your, your growth rates and um, and where you can have a big impact in terms of your RAM purchases, 
you know, if you're interested in intermuscular fat or anything like that, which has got nothing to do with Excel, but it's, um, you know, they're, they're the key industry um, uh, indexes that I'd, I'd be looking at that, that then align with your production system. Okay, great. Thanks, Sally. Um, that's it from the chat box. Um, I think we'll wrap it up there. No worries. Thanks for the opportunity and I hope everyone got something out of it. Definitely. Thank you all for coming um, and I'll be sending around the final recording shortly with the notes as well. Thanks, Charlotte. Thanks so much, Sally. See you all.